Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's winter meeting time in baseball. It's cold, at least here in Chicago. There's a lot of buzz going around with hot stove. And I'm just going to take this moment right now just for, you know, less than a minute. But just a shout out to Rick Hahn and the White Sox for finally taking the direction they need in rebuilding and starting off the rebuild with two really good trades. They traded the race Chris Sale. And they got this kid, Mankata, and a few other pieces in return. Mankata is the centerpiece of the trade, infielder, really good hitter, and this should be exciting for them. They also traded Anna Meaton today. They got a, got a lot of guys in return there, including the Nationals' top pitching prospect. So the Sox have done a good job in recycling their farm system. They're not done yet. They have more pieces to move, so they will get those probably pretty soon, I would imagine. They're pretty hot in the hot stove right now, so they're doing work. Congratulations to them. But uh, Cubs, that's what we talk about here. We're going to talk about a move that Theo made today. And it was the trade of Jorge Soler to the Kansas City Royals for the relief pitcher Wade Davis. There's a lot you can talk about here. And I know a lot of people are kind of iffy on it. But from what I've seen, most people like the deal. Where do we start? Let's start with what we got. Wade Davis. One of the top relievers in baseball, and he's been one of the top relievers the past three years with the Kansas City Royals. He started off kind of meh with the Tampa Bay Rays, but then he went to Kansas City and really established himself as one of the best closers in the game. And a lot of his numbers really aren't talked about as much as I think they should be, because they are really, really good. They have a lot of advanced metrics on him now. And you see a lot of the breakdowns of what he throws and what kind of numbers he's putting up in a different bunch of areas. But we're just going to talk about the basic numbers and throw in one or two advanced stats there. If you're going to look for the standard numbers right now, you can look back and see, wow, he had a 187 ERA last year. The year before that, 0.94. And the year before that, 1.00. Also, he gave up three home runs in the past three years. All three of those home runs were in 2015, so he didn't give up any last year, and didn't give up any the year before. Three in the last three years. That's impressive, to say the least. Now, if you want to go into a little bit of the advanced metrics, if you like FIP, fielding independent pitching, last year, 2.29, the year before, 2.29, and the year before that, 1.19. So, all really good numbers. And then you also look at a few other things like, oh, HR slash 9. <laughs> yeah, 0. 0.0, 0. 0.4, 0.00. That kind of puts the advanced metrics into saying, hey, he only gave up three home runs. Just kind of something fun to throw out there. Uh, left on base. Uh, Also very impressive, you have 92%, 15, 87.5, and 14, and last year 82.7%. So I really can't say much more than he's a really, really good pitcher. And he throws hard, a lot of movement, very good at locating. He's good to have at the back end of the bullpen. Chapman is not coming back. There's... Some question about Hector Rondon. He hasn't been the same since he got injured last year. We sure hope he does. But luckily, you also have guys like Carl Edwards Jr. and Pedro Strope in the pen. But hopefully, Hector Rondon will come around and be in the back of the bullpen along with Davis and Strope and Edwards. Now, what we gave up. Jorge Soler. We all know the issues We all know what he's done. We all know the inconsistency. First of all, the upside. Got a lot of power. Got a great swing. We've seen Jorge Soler when he's been hot. And boy, when he gets hot, whew. When he connects with the ball, I mean, I'm surprised that balls haven't been literally vaporized off his bat. Really, really does have a talent there. We've seen him get injured a lot, not only in the big league level, but in the minor leagues as well. He's been up with the Cubs since late 2014 when he made his major league debut in Cincinnati late 2014, hit a home run his first at-bat, and he put up some really good numbers too. He had five home runs, 
batted 292 on base 330. You know, for a young kid coming up, uh, 330 on base percentage, slightly above average. But hey, he was productive and he was looking like, hey, looks like another future star for the Cubs. And then in 2015, very up and down. On base percentage was literally at average 324, batted only 262, which I shouldn't say only. It's not bad. It's not great. But batting average is very subjective. Uh, Hit 10 home runs. Also, battling injuries, played 101 games. But you saw what he did in the postseason. His postseason numbers in 15, especially in the National League Division Series, whoo boy. Pretty good. On base percentage of 769. 571 on base percentage and two very big home runs in that series. He was an on base machine in that series. And even in the championship series, when no one could hit except Schwarber and him, he still had a 417 on base percentage. So, you know, he, he still did fairly well when no one else really was. He was a huge part of that postseason run in 15. And then last year in 16, he spent a lot of time hurt, and he had some very rough moments during the season, but he also had some great moments during the season. There were a lot of moments where he was tearing the cover off the ball, particularly when he came back from injury. And if a lot of you guys remember that A series when he hit the three-run home run his first at-bat, something to be remembered, obviously, coming back from that injury and hitting the crap out of the ball for a while with that being said I think it's the right move I think it's a good move it helps our bullpen which was shaky near the end because of the injuries that's really because of the injuries when they were fully healthy before those injuries they were one of the best bullpens of the NL they really were the back end particularly when Strope was on his game when Rondon was on his game and then he got Chapman. It was really a good bullpen, but unfortunately injuries kind of rattled things a little bit. So it's a good thing to have. And for Solaire, he gets to play in a place where he can bat every day a lot as a DH because we all know his fielding wasn't great. It's not something that anyone really denies. If he goes to Kansas City, plays every day, and he really develops and stays healthy, big key, staying healthy, I wish him nothing but the best because he was part of that rebuild and rising up and he got a World Series ring with us. So he'll always be remembered here. He'll always have a place in our hearts. But I like the move. I think it was smart by Theo. The man obviously knows what he's doing. Welcome to the Cubs, Wade Davis. Good luck, Jorge Soler.